Can you make a double exposure image in Photoscape X? This is an example of what a double exposure image is. What you're seeing here is an image of a person. So you got a portrait, but then it's being merged with another image. And it's actually a pretty neat way of describing, you know, whatever you're trying to convey. Uh, you've got a waterfall in this one. I've seen some with uh, mountains or a skyline, all sorts of things. So it's really neat. There's different ways you can do it. And for myself, I thought, okay, I'm going to go take a bunch of pictures and I'm going to see if I can make something work. So let's begin. So I took a bunch of embarrassing photos of myself looking very silly. And we're going to see what we can do. So what I've decided here, I've got this image right here. I think this is probably one of the better ones. So it's me looking off into the distance, very similar to uh, one of the one of these other images. I think this one actually looks best. So I'm going to hop in oh, to the editor here in Photoscape X and see if I'm able to make it into a double exposure image. So first of all, I'm going to want to cut myself out of this image. I'm going to hit copy over here, uh, copy to clipboard. I'm going to bring it over into the cutout tab, right click on here and hit open from cutout or open from cl uh, clipboard. So we have it opened up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here and I want to remove the background. This is using the magic eraser tool in the cutout tab. I've made an entire video about how to use the cutout tab. If you're interested in that, definitely check that video out. But what I'm able to do here is I'm able to go in and cut out uh, the majority of the image. And one thing I'm also going to cut out in this image, uh, I'm going to cut out this little wing on my hair. It's uh, going to be annoying in the final project if I don't cut it out now. I really should just comb my hair better. But uh, because I did not in this case, I uh, will uh, have to go back and I will go back and just edit that here. Okay, and maybe I'll even zoom in with a small brush and I'll just like make it look a little bit more jaggedy so it doesn't look super like a super huge giveaway that I cut that off. Okay. Okay. So we've got that cut out here. I'll just go to the brush. Make sure I didn't like leave anything. Okay. So we have myself cut out in this image. I right click, I hit copy to clipboard again, go back to the editor. And in this case, because we're going to go similar to like this image here, we're just going to open a new image and we're just going to do a normal, just white background. I'm going to paste myself into the image. So we've got myself in the image here. Okay, looks good. Now we're going to add in the part where we're going to double expose in the image. So we need our second image in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert this image. This is of a waterfall of a bunch of people. I don't own this image or anything like that, but I just wanted to use it as an example here for this educational video. So let's check this out here. So we've got this, we're going to bring it in. And what's neat is that in PhotoscapeX, they do have a blend mode with these different images that are being inserted. So blend mode, we have normal, darken, multiply, color burn, these different uh, things you can do. But what's neat is they do have lighten and they also have screen. There's lighten and screen. It's just your preference on which one you like better. There's a bunch of here, but find one that you like the most and just go with that. Ooh. Maybe we'll stick, maybe we'll try lighten this time. But as you can see, as you draw it over, the darker points of the image lets uh, your subject show up more. And the lighter part of the image is almost completely take away the, the, of the subject. So it really depends on what you want to keep in the image and everything like that. Okay, so I could decrease this down potentially. Bring this back. How far do these people go? Okay, so it's like down there. I could rotate this. Maybe not rotate it. Keep this straight. Increase this out. Bring this down so you can see all the different people there. Then my neck's, my neck looks really weird then. You're just kind of trying to position it to where you would want it to be. Maybe we'll just call that good. Okay, so you've got that 
you know, double exposure look going on. And you can adjust it, you can play around with it, see what you want to do, but this is a way that you're able to get that double exposure look in Photoscape X. So let me show you a few other things you could mess around with to see uh, what you can do. In the new Photoscape X 4.2.1, you do have the mask and color effects here. So what you could do, you could go to mask and you could mask out certain parts of the image. So like, let's say you know you don't want this part of the image here because it's covering up my face. I can hit apply and then my face isn't being changed at all because it's been adjusted like that. And I can even move this to show you guys better. It's not even adjusting right there because it's already been cut out. So you could do that to preserve different parts of the photo that you don't want adjusted a ton. So I like my neck here. I don't really want that adjusted. So I could go and remove this here. And one thing that I've noticed with Photoscape X with this thing, uh, with the ability to edit images that are in your image and you're pulling it out and changing and adjusting it, it doesn't have the best ability to select like adding and subtracting. The hardness is set at like zero, but yet it still is pretty, pretty powerful here. Can I do like a 0 0.02 or like something like really small? No, I don't think so. Nonetheless, um, oh, did I save that adjustment? I didn't save the adjustment. Okay, so let's uh, go and mask this stuff out, hit apply, and then you're able to see more of me, and then it just kind of shifts and merges over to this group of people that are down there. So you can do that to just adjust like how much of the waterfall do you want to be seen? Where do you want the people to kind of show up? So I think it's pretty neat. Now what they did up here was they made this like totally white up on top here. And you can do something like that. Uh, let's see, what could I do here? So I take this away, it's just this real dark section here. If I wanted to make it like really white, what would I do? I guess what I'd have to do is I'd go into color over here. And I would just want to go to mask. I'd want to really brighten up the area that I mask and it would be right up here that I want to mask as really, really bright. Let's see what that does. It helps to start removing a lot more of my hair if you look at it from before to now. So that's neat. And I could make it so my shirt is where the change is starting to happen. Um, it looks like there's like this bump on my shirt for some reason. Oh, this is my shoulder. Interesting. I could go to mask and with my shoulder here, I can mask over here and mask out this hump at the end because it's kind of unnecessary, I would say. It then gives more of like this blurred look. Can I do it where it's a harder, a harder adjustment there? So like you would cut in more and then you would subtract out more and maybe it ends up being a tighter cut. Yeah, I don't think that happened. Okay. Nonetheless, people probably won't look that closely, potentially. Maybe they won't. I don't know. Uh, but let's say you really like where that looks right there. We can go back here. We could deselect a little bit more around here. It's just tough because you can't see the overlay or anything. So yeah, really you're kind of messing around trying to see if you can make it work. But it is possible. It is possible to make a pretty interesting look and design. Alright, let's go back to mask one more time. We're going to unmask this section here. Hit apply. Okay, so with messing around with it, that's what you can make it end up looking like. So I can go over here to cut out. And there you go. You've got myself here. I will remove some stuff so it didn't affect my face very much. And then you've got the waterfall and then you have this. This part back here is 
discolored. It's not a perfect white, um, which would definitely be different than what we saw in the viewer here with this example image where he really went really white. Now he had some rocks in there, which actually is a really good thing. A lot of it, a lot of this process really depends on what kind of image you get. In this case, I didn't get many rocks. It probably wasn't the best image to utilize, but it worked out okay. What you could do though, is if there's something you need to remove later, you could go to the draw tool um, and we can go and select the exact color we want of the background. We can get a kind of a splotchy brush, get the size to where we want it to be. We can go in and we can start removing some of that coloration there. Um, and yeah, you just gotta remove just the right amount so you could still make it look like a waterfall and all this different stuff. But nonetheless, you can do a double exposure look in Photoscape X. It's not incredibly complicated. It's just remembering how you can use those blur tools or those blending tools. Uh, those blending tools are incredibly important to make it all possible. And like I said, what that would look like is either using Lighten or the screen. So using those different tools can make those uh, double exposures possible. But you guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.